flexible spending accounts versus health savings accounts. How can you use them to pay for medical expenses? What's the difference between the two? How can they help you lower your tax bill? And if you have the option between picking an FSA or an HSA, which one is better? Well, in this episode, I'm gonna give you the answer to those questions and more, and we're starting right now. What's up all my money conscious folks? Jared here, back with another episode of Minding My Money Mondays, a common sense talk about money matters. What's an FSA or an HSA anyway? Flexible spending accounts, also known as FSAs, and health spending accounts, also known as HSAs, are pre-tax accounts you can use to pay for health care related expenses. What this means is that you can have money taken out of your paycheck before Uncle Sam takes his cut and sock it away for your medical expenses, but more on that a little bit later. Some of the expenses you can use the money for include things like doctor's visits, medical procedures, prescription drugs, dental care, and vision expenses. And it's important to note, the expenses can be not only for you, but if you're married or have dependents, they can be for their expenses as well. So how do the accounts work? With either a FSA or an HSA, you tell your employer to take money out of your paycheck each pay period. They then take this money and deposit it into your FSA or HSA account. Some employers, not all, will also make contributions to your account on your behalf, which is an added bonus. I mean, who doesn't like free money, right? Then when you have to pay for medical expenses, you generally have the option to one, swipe your FSA or HSA card when paying for the items or services, or two, pay out of pocket and then submit your receipts for reimbursement. But this is where the differences start to come in. What are the key differences between the two? Let's start with the FSA. FSAs are generally available to those whose medical insurance is a PPO. In 2022, the maximum contribution allowed per IRS rules will be $2,850. FSAs are use it or lose it kind of plans, meaning if you put too much into your FSA and then you don't spend it all by December 31st, you lose the unspent money. And the same is generally true if you leave your job. That's because the account is technically owned by your employer. So if you quit your job, you lose the money as well. Okay, I kinda lied. It might be possible for you to carry over a maximum of $570 in 2022 in your FSA, but this can only happen if your employer allows you to carry it over the funds. You typically dictate how much will be contributed to the account during your open enrollment period, and you're locked in at that point, meaning you can't make changes throughout the year if your medical needs change. Now for the HSA. HSAs are generally only available to those who have a high deductible health plan. For 2022, the IRS defines a high deductible health plan as any plan with a deductible of at least $1,400 for an individual or $2,800 for a family. In 2022, the maximum contribution allowed per IRS rules is $3,650 for self-only coverage and $7,300 for those covering themselves and family members. With the HSA, you own the account for life. This means that not only can the funds roll over from one year to the next, it means that you can keep them if you leave your current employer. And also, unlike an FSA, with an HSA, you can typically change the amount contributed outside of the enrollment window if needed. Now, some HSAs will allow you to invest the money until you spend it on medical expenses. But even if that isn't an option, the money saved in the account can be taken out of the account tax-free after age 65. But if it's used before 65 for any non-medical expenses, it's subject to a 20% penalty and must be declared on your income tax form. So how can contributing to a FSA or HSA lower your tax bill? Well, since these are pre-tax payroll deductions, they come out before the taxes are calculated on your check. So if you made, say, $1,000 and Uncle Sam wants 7.65% for Social Security and Medicare, that would mean that he would take $76.50 out of your check for taxes. But if you put $100 into your FSA or HSA first, then he would only take $68.85 in Social Security and Medicare taxes. On top of that, the amount subject to income tax would be smaller, $900 versus $1,000, so that means that you should pay a lower income tax bill. Now, one thing that's important about an HSA, especially for those who are self-employed, is that you can actually get a tax deduction for making an HSA contribution with post-tax dollars. Let's take me and my wife, for example. My daughter and I are covered by her health insurance, and she has an HSA account. Well, I can give her money for her to make a contribution to the HSA account for my piece of medical bills, like my doctor's visits and my daughter's prescriptions. Since these contributions are not coming out of her paycheck, they count as post-tax contribution. At the end of the year, when she gets her IRS Form 5498-SA, it will list how much was contributed to the account. 
And when this is taken to her tax preparer, AKA me, it will ultimately result in a deduction on line 12 of schedule one of her form 1040. So FSAs versus HSAs, which one is better? Overall, the higher limits and contribution rollover of the health savings account make it a better choice if you can qualify. HSAs are more flexible than FSAs, allowing you to save for potential medical expenses and accumulate money over time. On the other hand, unless your employer allows you to roll over $570 from your FSA each year, your balance won't build up over time. This means depending on your employer's preference, any amount you put into an FSA will be lost if it's not used by the end of the year. However, it's key to note that most of the time, you won't even have to choose between an FSA and an HSA because the decision will be dependent on your work situation and your insurance deductible. So when you begin working at a new employer, check whether your health insurance is eligible for an HSA. If it's not, find out if your employer offers an FSA plan. In either instance, FSAs and HSAs are great ways to stash money away from medical expenses and lower your tax bill while doing so. Now, if you found this video helpful, then feel free to give it a thumbs up and check out some of our other money videos right here on our channel. Hey, I'm Jared Rogers CPA, and until we meet again, let's all continue to mind my money, and I will see you all next Monday. Take care.